So the first tool I'm going to use is the hoof pick. Just like it sounds, it's used for picking out the hooves. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stand beside her left shoulder, and I always like to start on the left. I'm going to run my hand down her leg, and then she just picks up her foot, because she is fairly well behaved. If they don't pick up their foot, you can lean on them a little bit, or tug a little bit at the fetlocks, slide your thumb down the, uh, down the cannon. And I'm just going to pick out all the stones. You can see there's dirt and rocks, and a little bit of bedding or manure in there. And I just want to get all the dirt out so I can see if there's any stone stuck in there that would hurt their feet. And I'm also just checking on the foot health. I'm looking for anything that's black or smelly, which would indicate thrush. Um, any injuries to the foot. And I always like to start with the foot because the saying is no hoof, no horse. You might as well find out right away if there's anything wrong with their feet before you go any further. behind a horse, you always want to walk close behind. Um, horses can kick, they can bite, they can strike, but the place I don't want to be is far away from the horse because if she kicks from here, she can actually hit me in the upper body or the head, whereas if she kicks from here, she's only going to get my feet. So when I'm picking up the feet, I keep my feet nice and close together. Again, I'm going to slide my hand down the back of her leg and just ease her foot a little bit to the back here. So I'm just going to stretch it forward this way. The reason I keep my feet together, if I put my foot under here and she puts her foot down suddenly, she might step on it. And you can see I've switched hands, so you become ambidextrous doing this. You can do it the other way. You can hold with your non-dominant hand. Um, I just find it easier to switch hands. still has a lot of her winter coat here, but it is coming out, and you can see it's coming out quite a lot. So I'm going to use this, which is a shedding blade. You can use it in one hand like this, or you can use it in two hands, and it's just a serrated blade, and what it does is helps remove the hair. So you can see the hair is coming out in big sheets like this, which is quite satisfying, really. And this doesn't hurt. If you have a, um, a sensitive skin force, you're not going to use this here on the shaved part. Um, you're just using it on the hairy part. And because this is kind of itchy in the spring, they quite like it. And you can always keep an eye on your horse's head while you're grooming, just to see what their ears are doing, if their ears are back, if their ears are pinned. And they'll also let you know when you find an itchy spot to scratch, sometimes they'll just start twisting their mouths and making faces, which is kind of their way of saying that feels nice. I'm just look at all that hair coming off. So the next two tools we have are the curry comb and the dandy brush. Now I like to use them both together. When you're first starting out, you can use them one at a time until you get the hang of it. But the curry comb goes first. And this is made out of rubber. And it's like a massage for the horse. So what it does is loosens up the dirt and the hair. And you can see she really likes that. 
So she's moving her head like that to show it's like stretched smooth. So this is going in a circular motion. And yes, that expression there means with her nose all pointy like that, move that feels really good. Yeah, that's the spot. Is that the spot, Winnie? Yes, that's the spot. So when you loosen up the hair with the curry comb, use the dandy brush to flick it all off in the direction of the coat. So the horse's hair has a direction that it goes all over the body. So you want to keep your eye on that. Oh, I know. Lots of hair and it's itchy. So that as I work through with my circular motions here, and then flick it all off in the direction of the hair coat. So the next brush is the body brush. It's got shorter bristles and they are softer, usually than the dandy brush bristles. And I use this one for the face and the legs and the belly and any sensitive parts of the horse. So when I'm doing the face, I'm just being careful to brush in the direction of the hair. And you can see how it changes direction on her forehead there. That's called the whorl. And I'm brushing up from that whorl and then down from it here. I know it's itchy, I know it's itchy. And when you're doing around the eye, you can cover up the eye with a hand. Just be, you want to be careful not to get any dirt in there. Uh, if I were getting her ready for a show, I'd also use a sponge to clean her eyes. But we're not doing that right now. You don't want to. You don't want to mess with the eyes more than you have to. So I'm also going to use this on her legs because horses have no muscle below the knee. This is muscle up here, but down here it's all tendon, bone, and ligament. So you don't want to use hard brushes on this area. It's quite sensitive. And as I'm going, I'm feeling with my hands so that I can feel if there are any lumps, bumps, cuts, nicks, uh, or swellings. 